I'm very happy to be part of this Congress. It's my first time uh, and uh, I'm really excited that there is a um, multidisciplinary approach to men's health, including fields like ours, which is endocrinology. So it's good to see colleagues from all over the world gathering together. I think it's important on two folds. First, uh, for the layman people, uh, it definitely would clarify a lot of doubts. Uh, people now read and browse the internet and uh, read magazines and they come across a lot of information. So it's important to uh, scientifically validate or disvalidate such uh, information. As far as professional communities like ours, uh, when you meet people from across the globe, uh, you can discuss and share ideas and talk about uh, studies you're doing, ways of practice, and there is always a gain for everybody. If you look at the risk factors in general that people suffer from nowadays, uh, men and women share them almost 99 percent uh, obesity high blood pressure um, central fat um, high cholesterol the difference then between men and women becomes the structural anatomy that is different which leads to different hormones and the main difference here we're talking about is that there is testosterone in men which women don't have but we also see that there are deaths in men from cardiovascular disease that are higher than women so then the question becomes is this linked to testosterone or to the other factors and that's where the discussion starts and the lack of testosterone is associated with many risk factors but also we find that the risk factors themselves like weight gain high blood sugar lack of exercise will cause low testosterone so we know there is an association it's just that we don't know which is the egg or the chicken and there is hope because we think that if you control the risk factors not only you will improve your uh, cardiovascular health but also you can improve your hormonal health and men's health in general